Good morning. Um, it's a Sunday morning, and I <clears throat> I've been listening to a podcast uh, by Ezra Klein, uh, where he was interviewing Tressie McMillan, um, and part of the conversation, or at least the way the beginning of the podcast starts, is about how a lot of us have ideas, and sometimes we have to be aware of how we communicate those ideas. Meaning that there's different. Um, platforms to use right if somebody does a blog or a podcast or a website or a tweet or an Instagram those are all ways of, of communicating and expressing oneself and sometimes when we think about the thought we want to get out uh, we should think about the filter uh, in regards to how we want to get that message out so kind of in that spirit I figured I'd shoot a video um, just to kind of do a little bit of free thought or just something that that kind of hit me today um, and just see if there's something worth, you know, sharing with folks or if not, then it's something that I could just save and to be honest, it'd be something really cool for my kids to check out. Um, so I could communicate certain thoughts that maybe, maybe I don't know how to talk to them about yet, right? So yeah, this morning I just kept thinking about how we all are kind of dealing with trauma after COVID and, and really many of us had trauma prior. Um, and how we don't have the systems in place to, to proactively deal with it. And I say that because, you know, like I, I, I had a pretty simple situation with my son where, you know, he couldn't get his mind off of Happy Meals and the toys and he wants a toy. And it got to the point where, you know, it was really hard to kind of um, transition out of. Like it was very locked in. And it made me think about how I was as a kid and how my brain would lock in the thoughts and kind of pick things apart and how I used to just feel not normal because of it um, you know I've gone through a lot of trauma in my life you know um, growing up poor growing up um, you know uh, I don't like to say a victim of child abuse I think it's a hard thing for me to say but I definitely got hit a lot as a kid um, I know that the way my father dealt with his anxiety was challenging for him and, and there were times he couldn't control it so you know I, th I think about all this stuff and I think about how long it took for me in my life to like seek therapy to find someone to talk to to find healthier avenues to get some of that anxiety out you know some of it was being a rapper and, and trying to get angst out and, and all these feelings and ideas and just emotions I didn't know how to properly express and how later on, you know, finding a therapist, being able to talk to these issues, being exposed to so many different people and, and experiences um, allowed me to, to kind of be the person you see now. So, you know, I, I say it often when I talk to folks, like I don't, I don't think that I'm special or any more special than anyone else, um, but I think I've been fortunate um, because of the opportunities that have been presented before me. Um, and I think we don't do enough to create those opportunities for the people of Chicago, for, for people out there who don't have access to resources, who grew up just like I did and are growing up like I did, but don't have the good fortune of having those opportunities in front of them. So I say that because we spend so much money on reactive public safety measures, but not the, the things that could make people healthy on the front end and we create better outcomes. So, you know, when we talk about things like treatment, not trauma, that, that's what it's about. It's about looking at how to deal with the system and deal with the amount of trauma and anxiety that people live with uh, in our society and that we need to find better ways to address it. It's why many of us uh, continue to advocate for public mental health clinics so that people have resources and it should be even more accessible now that we've seen really the growth of telehealth um, you know, I talk to my therapist uh, every other week, it used to be every week on Mondays at noon, just hit a Zoom button, you know, take some time out to do that call. And I think being able to have that for people is important. If we want to have a society where people aren't driven to, you know, um, substance abuse or to committing crimes of desperation or not understanding how to manage their, their anger. Uh, we want to have these kind of facilities and services and make them readily accessible to everybody so we can get better outcomes. I think it's actually, um, if you're looking at it from a fiduciary responsibility, I think it's a way better investment for long-term results 
that lead to a safer city, that lead to one where, you know, people love to live here and are able to find places to work and thrive. Um, that's part of, of being healthy. So uh, that's just what was on my mind today. I wanted to make sure I could talk through that. Um, I was really kind of feeling that just because I think about just the amount of stuff I've had to endure and how much I know people have had to endure now uh, because of COVID and how people will endure coming out of COVID when economically we're still going through a lot of struggle. So I hope you all out there, um, or if this is just for my kids, I hope that you guys are doing well, um, that you have places and people to go to when things are rough, to talk to them, and that you know that you're not alone, that we're all going through this stuff together. Um, I love y'all. Take care.